this lecture, we're going to talk about stability of systems with unstructured uncertainty. We've already looked a little bit at basic uncertainty forms. We're going to talk now about casting the uncertainty into a, a quote unquote normalized form. Uh, and um, look at Ny Nyquist criteria, small gain theorem. These are things we've looked at. We're going to, I mean, a part of all of this unstructured stability analysis. All right, so we have different ways in which uncertainty can appear. Um, we, we can have it appear as an additive form. So we have, or subtractive, I mean, it, here we have additive, could be subtractive. Um, in, in which case, the uncertainty adds directly to the nominal plant. So P0 here is a nominal plant. And it, it appears this way. So basically, in a block diagram form, it might look something like this. So it, it's in parallel with the block diagram with the uh, nominal plant. Uh, we could have multiplicative uncertainty. That is, I have the the nominal plant, and the part with uncertainty um, is in series with that. So in parallel, we get additive. In series, we get multiplicative. And then we can also have a feedback type of uncertainty, which is another form of multiplicative uncertainty. The difference now is that, um, is that we have this feedback occurring. And so we have this kind of situation. Actually, I think that should be a negative sign. And so we want to see how to analyze problems that involve these kinds of uncertainty types. So I'm going to assume now that my plant is of this form. Um, and so we can write that that P is in this set of uncertainty, uh, of set of systems. And so this is called unstructured uncertainty because delta, we don't know specifically anything about it per se. In terms of, for example, we don't know how many poles it has, we don't know how many zeros it has, where the poles or zeros are, the gain, okay, or, or stuff like that. So for now, this, uh, this is the additive uncertainty set. W is a weighting matrix that weights uh, the, um, the uncertainty in such a way that, uh, well, it, it weights the uncertainty. We'll, we'll come back and see what W is going to be here in a little bit. But assuming now we have some uncertainty arising, so all of this is the uncertainty. And uh, we're going to find a W that's not so uncertain that makes all of this then um, put it in a standard or normalized form. It's often the case that when we have uncertainty, that the uncertainty isn't completely unknown. Because we have a system, we can do tests on it, we can do experiments, and we can find out some information about the uncertainty. Okay, And so in the scalar case, we will often have knowledge of an uncertainty bound like this. And here I say scalar. It, you could also have, an, uh, have it in the uh, matrix case as well, but let's start simple. <laughs> okay, so in this case, we have our nominal plant. P is some element in this uncertainty set. Okay. And basically what this is saying is for, for every value of frequency, we have some upper bound, L. Um, so for, for all frequencies and for all elements in this set, uncertainty set, we have an upper bound. An upper bound on the difference between the actual system or the system in this set and the nominal. So in order for us to have such an upper bound, it's helpful to have a nominal model that that allows this kind of thing. And so, but it, it's often the case that we have some knowledge. And so here we're going to assume this this knowledge. For the sake of generality, we try to arrange the uncertainty so that we have that the uncertainty has infinity norm less than or equal to one. Okay, so, so this is the maximum gain over all frequencies. 
and we, we just are going to assume it has infinity norm less than or equal to 1. And so we can do this by choosing our weighting function appropriately. Since we already know something about our upper bound, um, we can choose our weighting function to have magnitude greater than or equal to that, which is greater than or equal to that. So if this is the, if this is the case, then, um, then W is going to be greater than our uncertainty. And, um, and so for any P in the uncertainty set, we have this relationship. Okay, so because of the fact that we've, we've assumed that delta has an uncertainty magnitude less than or equal to 1, then I have this set of inequalities. So this uncertainty is bounded by this uncertainty because of the fact that our uncertainty, uh, which is additive uncertainty. So notice in, in doing this, because we have additive uncertainty, this is actually P naught plus W delta. And so this difference is just W delta. And so we have this inequality. Now, when we're talking about uncertainty, it's generally assumed that that any unstable poles that there are must be a part of the nominal model. And those must be well enough known. So in other words, our uncertainty is such that um, the, un the uncertainty is stable, basically. So the, P, the set PA is in general, is very general. Since, since we're only considering things with, with a delta of norm less than or equal to one, there are infinite, infinite numbers of things that can do that. And they could be arbitrarily large order. So this is one way of, of working with it. Now, in, in setting things up this way, we have assumed certain things. And this characterization of uncertainty could be overly conservative. That is, it can make this set too large larger than than the than the actual set of uncertainty so we have we have assumed a certain uncertainty set but our actual uncertainty may be uh, much less than this much, much less uncertain so that's the additive uncertainty case what about the multiplicative uncertainty case so again we have it of this form so that is P, the overall combination, is given by the product of this times this quantity. Okay, And so if we write it in this form, then we can look for an uncertainty bound given by this. So, so notice it's not just the difference between the nominal plant and the uh, uncertain plant, but it's that divided by the nominal plant which is, uh, um, again, that's a known quantity. And so this, this whole thing, this ratio, is actually something like a percent difference. Okay, so if we know a, a percent difference, uh, and in fact, if P naught is known, we can, we can work with that and recast it this way and find an upper bound for this quantity. Okay, if, um, if P is unstable, then this difference is actually going to be a stable quantity. And so we don't have to worry. So all of this, so this a ratio of stable transfer function over a stable transfer function over, I'm sorry, stable transfer function. Um, anyway, we have an uncertainty bound that we have to work with. Again, we're going to try to arrange our uh, uncertainty so that our um, uncertainty delta is has infinity norm less than one and again we're going to set our set our upper bound to be of this form and so when we do that we take this quantity which is actually given by this quantity so notice that p naught subtract cancels and we're left with p naught w delta over p naught but the p naught for a scalar case cancels 
and so we're just left with this quantity. This, we're assuming, has infinity to norm less than or equal to 1, so the magnitude of this is less than or equal to 1. Anyway, all of this is less than or equal to L, and that's less than or equal to um, W. So if we choose W to satisfy this inequality, then we have this relationship. So why would we, what's the point of choosing W? If we already have an upper bound, why do we need the W to satisfy this relationship? Well, the W, it turns out, we're going to have is actually a, a transfer function, whereas L itself is just a, a bound, and it may not be associated with the transfer function. So well, this will make more sense when we look at the practice problems. Some of the unstable poles of P0 may be canceled by 1 plus W delta, leaving the actual plant with fewer unstable poles than the nominal. So that's actually a possibility, which is kind of interesting. But in, in such a case, any such cancellations are exact, and so we don't need to worry about them. So we don't need to worry about cancellations of stable poles. We definitely have a problem if there are cancellations of unstable poles. Uh, we, ha we definitely have a, uh, a problem if there are cancellation of unstable poles, but in this case, the cancellations would be exact, in which case we don't have to worry about them. Yeah, that's what I meant. So in terms of casting the uncertainty into a no normalized form, given an uncertainty, how do we quantify the uncertainty? So we've talked about that a little bit. How do we create a weighting function w so that the uncertainty is normalized? And how do we put it then into, how do we put a problem into one of these standard forms? So in general, systems will tend to lend themselves to particular forms, but how do we actually put it into one of those forms? So in doing this, we actually kind of need to look at some example problems, and we'll see that in the next lecture.